Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. A pleasure to be on. You know, in popular media, Muslims are depicted often in loveless marriages, you know, arranged marriages, and um, it seems like they have to defy tradition in order to find love or defy religion or their family. You know, does Islam have anything to say about romantic love? Well, first of all, about love itself. Uh, love is something that the Quran says that God puts in the hearts of people. For example, speaking uh, about Christians, God says, And God placed in the hearts of those who follow Jesus uh, um, uh, compassion and mercy. Uh, so this uh, love is is there. That's something that uh, it's God. It's it's what God puts in the hearts of the of the believers. In the thirtieth chapter of the Quran, Surah Al Rum, uh, there uh, we find mention that. Um, uh, it is from the signs of God that he created for you spouses from your own kind. And, uh, and he has put this compassion in your hearts for, for each other. Uh, so uh, many Muslims understand from this that uh, it, the, the love is not necessary before marriage. But once you are married and you associate with each other and you are compassionate and uh, kind to each other, then naturally the love will develop. In fact, this is how it develops even outside of marriage. People work together, they uh, have some association together. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it, uh, you know, it develops over time. Uh, so the, the love will definitely develop over time within the marriage. And so there is no need for it to be cultivated prior to marriage. And on the other hand, uh, trying to cultivate such a, a relationship before marriage uh, can lead to many negative consequences, including, um, uh, from a Muslim point of view, the, the moral uh, consequence that maybe people will get close to each other and um, they will commit acts which are close to uh, the, the act of, a, of, of fornication, mm -hmm. which, of course, in, in the Bible and the Quran is a prohibited uh, deed. Mm -hmm. So I guess there's a fear that, you know, you're, I think in Islam, there's always been this fear that your, your desires and passion can kind of take over and lead you in the wrong direction, make you make the wrong choices in life, right? Yeah. So I guess that's how Muslims view romantic love. Yeah, so we, it seems that we would prefer that uh, we approach uh, the, the subject of marriage in a rational way. Uh, we think carefully about, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, our spouse will be good for us, for our children, for our future. Um, whereas love seems to go in the other direction of saying, okay, you know, I have this feeling and I must pursue this feeling. This is the person I love and I must get married to this person. Uh, and uh, regardless of uh, any other consideration. Uh, so it, it looks like the, the, it's a dichotomy between this and that. But of course, it can be both and. It can be that uh, one uh, feels attracted to a certain person. Um, and, and, and there's nothing against this because the a, a hadith of, of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, says that uh, people get married for various reasons and the reasons are listed for uh, wealth, for status, for beauty, and for religion. So you marry for religion. Uh, but, but the hadith itself does not negate the other uh, objectives. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's possible that the person you're getting married to is a religious person, but the person is also like good looking and has good status and, and even has wealth. So it, it doesn't have to be either or. Because mm -hmm. you can fall in love with someone not because of how they look or, you know, their status, but also because of their intrinsic qualities, right? Their good yes, qualities. and you mentioned the term fall in love. Uh, it, it, you know, people report that, you know, I saw this person and it was love at first sight. Or if even if we dispute the idea of love at first sight, nonetheless, uh, stories are garol, uh, galore, not, <laughs> not, only, not only in fiction, but, but also in real life. People mm -hmm. uh, genuinely feel that they are so much in love with a certain person that they have to get married to this person or, uh, and, and sometimes we have found, you know, sometimes people commit suicide uh, because they, they're, they're really 
want to get married to this person. That's the person that they love. And people report that, you know, I can't sleep, I can't eat, I'm just thinking of this person all of the time and so on. So, so that's real, regardless mm -hmm. of the reasons for it or who's to blame or how it got to that, people have this feeling. So having that feeling itself, is there anything in the Quran or in the prophetic sayings that would say that this feeling itself is a sin? And I don't find anything like this. On the contrary, we find that uh, there is mention uh, of, of love in a good way, in, uh, both in the Quran and now I can mention the Sunnah. Uh, there is a hadith in Ibn Majah's collection which says, uh, for two poor persons who love each other, there is nothing like marriage. Mm. In that, uh, well, we can understand this to mean that that the marriage will provide the consummation for this love that people feel. So the feeling the love itself is not uh, a sin, but what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. When you act on it by doing something that is uh, unlawful in, in the faith, that is when you are blameworthy, but not for having the feeling itself mm -hmm. in the first. I'm sure even at the time of the prophet, there were many people who had this sort of romantic love within them. We even hear, you know, the poems, you know, Layla and Majnoon, but you know, even amongst the companions of the prophet, we hear that someone would say, I, don't, I didn't want to marry this person because I, I, I just don't have that feeling, right? There is an interesting story. It's mentioned in the uh, collection of Al-Bukhari. Um, it, it, basically, there, there were two persons uh, mar married, uh, uh, Mughith and Barira. And uh, Barira at the time was, uh, was a slave, so she didn't have her freedom. And, and Aisha, the mother of the believers, purchased her to set her free. So once she is set free, according to Islamic law, now she has the option to annul her marriage or to keep it. Mm -hmm. Because basically the idea is that while she was a slave, she didn't have much of a choice. Now she has a choice. So she chose to annul the marriage. And uh, her former husband now, Maurice, uh, would follow her in the marketplace with tears streaming down his eyes and wetting his beard, uh, pleading with her to take take him back. <laughs> and the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw this and uh, he, he tried to intervene on his behalf. Uh, he uh, asked the, the woman, would you take him back? And she said, well, did God command you to to, uh, you know, instruct me so. And he said, no. And the woman said, in that case, I have no need for him. Uh, so, so this shows that uh, he was in love with her and, and the love itself is not condemnable so long as, you know, he doesn't go touch her or kiss her or something like this. Thank you for your thoughts, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at QuranSpeaks.com.